We've seen how to use procedural maps. We've seen how to import bitmaps into a 3D scene. Now let's look at how to actually directly paint onto a surface and create a bitmap within 3ds Max. It's a very cool feature called Viewport Canvas. For it to work well, you must have good mapping coordinates on the object, or good UVs. And this truncated icosahedron polyhedral object does not have good UVs on it currently. We can add that really easily. Select the object and go into the modifier list in the modify panel and add a UVW map modifier. And just simply choose spherical mapping. And that's all there is to that. We've got pretty good UVs on it now. Let's open up the viewport canvas panel. It's in the tools menu. Tools, viewport canvas, it's down here. First thing we need to do is assign a material. If a material already exists on the object, then we can paint into one or more of the map channels of that material. If a material does not exist, we can create one directly from the viewport canvas panel here. We start by going to the options section here where it says paint on, pick map. Click on that button. Since we don't have a material on the object yet, we can now assign a material. We can choose to assign a standard material or we could click on this button, which would open up the material map browser. We could choose a different type of material like physical or whatever. I'm just gonna choose assign standard. Now I get a little pop-up that asks, which map channel do I want to paint into? I'm gonna choose the diffuse color or the base color. Then I get a dialog asking what resolution I want for a bitmap that's going to be generated by 3ds Max. You really wanna have powers of two that is 256, 512, 1024, et cetera. And you also want it to be a square. If you choose an aspect ratio that's non-square, then some of the tools, specifically the filters, will come out kind of strange. So you want to use a square aspect. Let's do 1024 by 1024 by just clicking on this little preset button. We also have to determine where our new texture is going to be saved and what its file name is going to be and its file format. To do that, we can click on this Browse button. And we're taken to our current project, but strangely, we're taking into the Scenes folder. And of course, bitmaps should all be placed into Scene Assets Images. We'll need to manually navigate to there. I'll go up one level in my project. Here we go, Scene Assets, Images. And if you want, you can just drop it in here directly, or you could create a subfolder within here. I'm just gonna put it directly into that images folder and I'll call it viewport canvas and I need to choose a file type. The Microsoft BMP image file format would work fine. I do prefer PNG because it is losslessly compressed and a little bit more universal. Click on that save as type pull down list. And really you can choose anything in here except for JPEG. That would be a very poor choice because JPEGs are always lossy compressed and you'll have some quality issues. I'm gonna choose PNG or Portable Network Graphics, and then I'll click Save, and I'll get a little PNG configuration dialog. Depending upon which format you choose here, you'll get a different dialog. I don't really want a 48-bit RGB file. That's going to be 16 bits per channel. I don't really need that in this case. I'll choose RGB 24-bit, which is eight bits per channel. And I also don't need an alpha channel or transparency here. I'll click OK. Now we've determined the name of the file and where it's going to be saved. And also we have determined its resolution. I'll click OK. And now that texture file has been created on the hard drive in that specific location. And now we can go ahead and start painting. And let's do something fun here. We've got some brush images that we can choose from. And let's paint with color. Click on that rectangle there and we get a pop-up dialog. And these are a bunch of factory default images that we can use to paint with. If we wanted to, we could create our own images as brush stamps. And to do that, we would place images into a specific folder in the user profile for 3ds Max. And I'll just detour to show you that that's accessible from this button, Browse Custom Maps Directory. If I clicked on that, then we would be taken to our current users app data, local, Autodesk, et cetera, and then into a folder called Custom Brushes. 
And that's where you would drop the files if you wanted to use your own brush stamps. All right, back to 3ds Max. I'll paint with this abstract image here. And I want to use the brush tool. And when I click on that, I have to choose which image I want to paint into. And that's going to be the diffuse color here. And I get another pop-up dialog, which is layers. And amazingly, the viewport canvas feature within 3ds Max is almost like a miniature version of Photoshop. We can have as many layers as we want. We can have masks on those layers. We can apply blending modes and all sorts of amazing stuff. And if I click and drag across here, I can paint. Let's make the brush a lot larger. We have controls here for the brush settings. And of course we could drag on these spinners to increase or decrease that. We can save time by just using the keyboard shortcut to play around with the brush radius, hold down control and shift and drag and you can increase or decrease that radius. You've also got the hardness of the brush. And if you want to change the hardness, it's control and alt and drag. And now I've got a perfectly hard edge to that brush. I'm just going to paint across this surface and create kind of an abstract pattern. Maybe I'll do a softer brush. Just want to cover the entire surface there. We're just kind of having fun with this. And now I've got something painted into the background layer. And I can go ahead and add another layer. Just like in Photoshop, we've got the ability to have multi-layers. I'll click Add New Layer. And now I've got another layer stacked on top. And I can choose maybe just a flat color like black. We've got colors over here. We can choose white or black. Or we can click here to open a color palette and choose a custom color. I'm just going to paint with black. And I'll reduce the size of my brush again with Control-Shift. And I'm still painting with that brush stamp but I can turn this little use button off over here and then I can paint with black. Go around and just do something kind of abstract on that surface. Pretty cool feature. Alrighty, so I've got something on there. And in addition to just raw paint here, we can filter a layer. And these are destructive filters, meaning that you can't really change them once they're done. But we can have some fun with that. If that layer one is selected, I can go into the filter menu here and choose distort and then play around with this. Get a kind of interesting abstract look just by adjusting some of these sliders and those parameters. And when I click OK, I'm committing to that and that's going to be a permanent change. And then I also want to show you that you do have the ability, just like in Photoshop, to use blending modes. And that's what this pull down list is here. In the normal mode, then we're just overlaying that black image on top of the background. We can try out some of these other ones. Let's see, we've got overlay, and that's going to kind of amplify the saturation. All right, cool. So we could go a lot, lot deeper into this, playing around with all the different features here, but I think that's enough for now. Once you've got something that you like, you'll want to save that texture again. And if you have multiple layers, it's a good idea to save as a PSD or a Photoshop document. And to save what you've got here, you want to right click on the object. And when you right click, you get a save texture layers pop-up dialog. And you've got a bunch of options here. Save as PSD file is a good option, but that's actually just gonna save it out to another file. It's not going to be instanced into the current material. If I choose Save as PSD and Replace Texture in Material, then we will actually save it out as a Photoshop document. And then that layered Photoshop document will be applied as the diffuse color of the object or material, rather. That's the probably best option here to preserve the layers. Save as PSD and Replace Texture in Material. When we click that button, we should be taken to our current project Scene Assets Images. If we're not taken there, of course, we should navigate there manually. And we're actually going to save out another file. We saved our PNG previously, but now we're saving a layered PSD or Photoshop document. And I'll call that one Viewport Canvas as well. Making sure that I don't have the PNG extension on there. And it'll be Viewport Canvas.psd. And I'll go ahead and save that. And now we've got our file saved out. 
And there's one last little tricky thing I want to show you, which is, as we saw earlier, you might have issues with asset management if you have absolute paths in your maps. And that's actually kind of happened for us here, unfortunately. We'll need to fix that. This is kind of a, an issue. But if I go into the material editor with the M key and go to my scene materials, here's the material that got created automatically, and it's just called standard material. I'll drag it over into the view and instance it. Here's our bitmap texture. I'll double click on that. And you'll see that it is in fact viewport canvas.psd, but it's got a bunch of stuff over here in front of or before scene assets images. And as I mentioned earlier, that's not a good thing. We want this to be a relative path that starts with scene assets images and there should be no information here before that. I can click this button to repath the file. And basically all I need to do really is to select that same file and then click open. And I get a pop-up asking me, do I want to use one of the individual layers or do I want to use all of the layers? Now it does say collapse layers, don't let that fool you. We're not actually going to flatten the layers in the Photoshop document itself. This is not going to change the fact that the PSD actually has two layers. It's just going to apply both of the layers to the diffuse channel of this material. Click OK. And now it's been repathed correctly. It has a relative path that just starts with scene assets images. All right, very cool. Viewport Canvas is a great tool for painting and touching up textures directly on objects. And that concludes our chapter on mapping textures in 3ds Max.